हेलो एवरी वन माई नेम इज कौसुभ किसकर एंड आई एम डूइंग एम टेक फ्रॉम सी एस सी डिपार्टमेंट एंड इन दिस प्रेजेंटेशन आई वी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ पॉलिसी एन्फोर्समेंट फ्रेमवर्क फॉर एंड्रॉयड दिस इज माई दिस इज प्रोजेक्ट टॉपिक सो लेट स्टार्ट इन द आउटलाइन आई विल फर्स्ट टॉक अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट एंड्रॉयड दैट यू मे हैव लिसन इन अदर सेशन्स देन आई विल कवर वन ऑफ द रिसर्च पेपर्स दैट आई हैव रेड फॉर दिस प्रोजेक्ट एंड देन वॉट आई विल बी इम्प्लीमेंटिंग इन दिस प्रोजेक्ट and at the end i'll conclude the session uh, so first talk about the uh, android application architecture so uh, you may know that the uh, android application can have any of the following components the first is activity which is the interface between uh, user and the application so user can interact with the application using activity then the uh, service next is a service so if you have any uh, high duty task heavy duty task then you can implement it as a service instead of implementing the logic in a android activity the third part is content provider in which it's a uh, interface between your application and database and the last one is broadcast receiver so android sends out uh, many events uh, to the whole system so say you uh, get a call from someone or the wifi state is changed or something like that so all these broadcast receivers can be uh, captured or can be received uh, to your application using broadcast receiver for that you will have to implement a broadcast receiver after that you will be able to capture all those events so next is android security so android provides some basic mechanism for the security purpose uh, first of which is application sandboxing so as you may know that, know that the uh, android is based on the linux kernel so in android there is a concept of uh, users so for every application that you install a new uh, user is created and a new user id is assigned to that application so whenever you run an application it's run as that user and it gets its own separate dalvik vm so even if the vm crashes then at that time it won't affect the other executing applications the next is application signing so if you are a application developer so before releasing your application to the any uh, google play store or any other store you will have to sign the application using a digital certificate next part is android uh, permission model so the android as os and many of its stock applications they provide many features so you get a calling features then you can have access to the gps or you can also use internet but for all these features uh, the android system has given the permissions label so if you want to any uh, use any of these features in your application then you'll have to uh, assign the permissions label to that uh, application then and only then you can use those apis otherwise otherwise the uh, android system will throw uh, error or it will throw security exceptions so the next part is all or nothing approach so this approach is basically so if you are installing a application so at that time say there are 10 permissions which are uh, mentioned in that application so at that time you cannot say that i just want to uh, assign or i just want to grant five uh, uh, permissions and other five permissions shouldn't be granted that's not possible so for the installation while installing you'll have to accept all the permissions then and only then the application can be installed plus uh, once the applications are granted to the application so uh, once the permissions are granted to the application then you cannot revoke the permissions so if you want to revoke the permissions then you have to uninstall the applications which basically obviously means that the you won't be able to access the uh, installed application anymore and the last part is uh, once you give the permissions to that application you do not have any control on the resources so say your application is uh, using send sms permission so you don't have any Uh, control over how many sms that application uh, sends or if your application is using internet permission then you cannot say that uh, restrict this app uh, by say if the application is using 100 mb of data for downloading and uploading after that that application shouldn't get internet access that's not possible in uh, default android me uh, security mechanism so that's why we need a policy framework 
so the one of the main goals of the policy enforcement framework is to restrict the usage of resources so the policy framework will be able to give such kind of control to the uh, user so you can define policies saying that let this application send just 25 sms per day or if the application is using internet access then you can you will be able to uh, define a policy saying that the weekly uh, download and upload of the uh, that particular application should be limited to 100 mb so if the that application uh, exceeds that said limit then after that it won't have that particular permission the next is uh, to prevent the privilege escalation attack so basically let me first uh, give a brief idea about privilege escalation attack so say you have two application one is yours and the other one is attackers so your application has the internet permission and you have uh, implemented a service but that's not a uh, pro well protected service so any other application can access your service and pass on the url to the service and the service will basically download the data using that url so what attacker will do it will uh, create his own application and that application will use uh, and that application won't have internet uh, permission but it will use your service to download the data so basically for that attacker's application it's a privilege escalation so the uh, policy enforcement framework will be able to uh, detect and stop such kinds of attack so in general a policy enforcement framework will uh, deal with users security and policy concerns to provide them uh, to provide users with fine grained access control and then uh, next is a uh, users of the system so who can use this system so the first one is end users that's the users who have physical access to the device so they can define the policies for their own or the next is trusted third parties so let's assume that uh, the employer has distributed tablets to his employees and employee uh, employer wants to uh, not leak the data beyond company premises so at that point uh, the trusted third party as a means the employer as a trusted third party comes into picture and he should be able to define policies using this framework or even both end users and trusted uh, uh, third parties both of them can de uh, define the policies now we have seen what kind of policies uh, we can define and we can enforce but when to enforce such policies so the first or obvious uh, mechanism is uh, on different events that are generated by the system so say if particular application is getting launched so at that time we can say that particular a policy should be enforced or we can also consider the environmental or system attributes uh, which are uh, part of context aware policies so time location cpu speed or battery th these all attributes come under the uh, context aware policies so say if you are in a company from 10 pm to 4 pm so at that time uh, context aware policies will consider a time as a system attribute and it will enforce the policies or uh you can use gps also in which case if you are within the company premises then at that time uh it will uh, execute the appropriate policies and so on so this was the very brief idea very uh, general idea about the policy enforcement framework but then why i chose this as my uh, thesis project so the first is uh, for the akash tablet akash tablet is getting distributed to many uh, school and college students so let's say that uh, teacher wants to conduct the quiz on akash tablet so at that time no other applications should get launched so during a quiz time and or exam time uh, applications which are not relevant to the quiz or exam say browser or any messaging applications those application shouldn't get launched so the framework will be able to define such define and execute such policies the next is limited sets of a set of apps during school time so during school time or uh, college time uh, applications such as gaming or messaging those shouldn't be allowed so uh, those policies uh, will also be considered the next is different set of apps uh, for different courses or subjects so say for uh, history class a teacher may want 
Google Earth or Google Map application. So, uh, and this set might be irrelevant if the mathematics subject is going on. So, for mathematics, it will have different sets of application, and during the history class, it will have different sets of application. And obviously, at the end, parental control. So, parents may also want to have the some kind of control over uh, the tablet. The next is a context attribute, which is uh, battery virtualization. So, we have already seen that context attributes like time location. So, uh, all the research papers that I have read, they have covered this uh, time and location attribute, but no one has ever uh, considered the battery virtualization. So, what it will basically do is, it will uh, get the battery consumption uh, information for each and every application. So, say uh, you have 10 applications and you want to define a policy saying that if particular application uh, consumes 30 percent of the overall battery, then after that, that particular application should not get launched. Then this kind of policy will be enforced. Or another example that I can give is, uh, say you are running low on the battery and you have just 20 or 25 percent of the battery remaining. So, at that time, gaming applications should not get launched. So, this kind of policy you can enforce. And the last part is remote access mechanisms. So, now consider that the Akash tablet is uh, distributed to many students and there is some kind of change or update in the policies. So, what admin will have to do it, uh, just collect all the tablets back and will have, he will have to uh, connect all the tablets one by one to the um, machine and enforce the policy or update the policies. So, instead of that, we can use this uh, remote access mechanism to remotely enforce or update the policies. So, existing mechanisms have suggested use of SMS, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but this is not enough. So, I will tell why in couple of slides. So, just uh, note that uh, we will need something more than this. So, this was the motivation behind my uh, this topic. So, I will first now explain one of the papers that I have read. So, SEND is uh, a research paper which basically uh, is a short form for semantically uh, rich application centric Android security. So, basically this is framework which protects application from another application. So, the, and the uh, policy enforcement is done at the install time also and at the runtime also. So, when you are installing the application at that time you can, uh, you can limit the installation or you can uh, deny the installation based on the policies and also when you are launching another applications, the framework will uh, check the policies if there are any policies which uh, violate the communication access between two different applications and it will restrict the, uh, that communication part. So, as I said, the security policies are divided into two parts. The first one is uh, install time policy and the second one is runtime policies. So, the install time policies are nothing but permission granting policies. So, the first uh, this rectangle which you see here is what Android uh, provides by default. So, the as we have uh, learned that the permission it also it has the permission model by default. So, the, the sent model, they have suggested this 1.2 which is a signature based policies. So, what basically it means is, uh, once you are installing the application, it will uh, check the signature of that particular application. As I have already told you, uh, the application developer needs to sign the application before releasing it. So, that digital signature will be considered in this policy. So, uh, if that particular application has the given signature, then and only then allow this app to get installed on the device. And if that particular application does not have this uh, signature, then we can assume that the application has been modified. The next part is application configuration based policy. It considers the uh, requested permissions. So, whatever uh, permissions that that particular application has requested based on that, the uh, that application will be allowed to install or uh, just to deny the installation. So, and it will it may also cover the application version. So, particular version has, has some kind of bug and that bug has been rectified in the next version. Then you can define the policy saying that the application version 
which is lower than this should not be allowed to install. So, these two are the were the parts of uh, run install time policies. Next, we will focus on the runtime policies, which is nothing but the interaction between two, uh, two applications. So, the first one is signature based policies, which again considers the digital signature of the uh, two communicating apps. So, say uh, one application is communicating to the another and you want to restrict the access. So, you can define a policy saying that the other application which wants to uh, communicate with the first application should have this signature. Uh, again, in this case also we can consider that if signature does not match, then the application has been modified. The next is um, application configuration policy. So, in this policy, the particular permissions which are held by the uh, communicating applications are considered. So, in using this policy uh, classification, we can stop privilege escalation attack. So, say that you had two application, one with the internet access and one without internet access, the example just I gave you. So, in that case, uh, you can define a policy that the communicating app should also have the internet access. So, if your application has the internet access, then the other application which wants to communicate with you, it should also have the internet access. So, defining by defining such policy, you will be able to stop the privilege escalation attack. And the last part is context based policies. So, uh, next is proposal. So, I will what I will be implementing uh, in this project. So, the first point that I told you was about the Akash tablet getting distributed to the uh, school and college students. So, the proposed architecture will be the end users will be uh, school or college admins, then the teachers, parents and then the students itself. So, in this case the school or college admins and teachers and parents we can consider them as a trusted third parties and parents and uh, uh, parents and students, we can consider them as end users. But now say uh, in this the limited set of apps during school time. So, the school admin has uh, given the policy saying that these particular application should not be launched for particular time when the students are in college or school and at the during the lecture time teacher wants to access, wants to give access to say Google Earth or Google Map application and that app has been restricted by the school admin. So, at that at this point there will be a conflict between the policies. So, we will have to consider the poly, uh, priority handling also saying that the teachers have more access than the schools. So, if the policies defined by teachers are more uh, they get more priority uh, than the policies defined by the school admins. And then at the end, say parents have also enforced the policies. So, these policies uh, should not be removed by the children or the students. So, for that we will need to provide some sort of uh, access mechanism, authentication mechanism. And then I will also consider time location. Time location, these two attributes they have already covered, but the battery form that I will also try to include in my uh, final implementation. The next I talked about uh, context attribute which was battery virtualization which considers the uh, total battery consumption by particular applications. So, uh, if you have seen the settings in any Akash tablet or any other Android device, uh, in the battery part it shows the top 10 usage of the batteries which applications have uh, considered or they have consumed uh, more batteries. So, these, so they already maintain this kind of battery information, battery consumption information, but that is not available to the final, uh, the end user or the application developer. That is a part of the settings uh, application. So, I will, I will try to uh, read that or I will go through that power usage summary dot java. I have given the uh, reference here. So, I will go through this code and I will try to implement same for my uh, project. And the last part was access uh, remote access mechanism in which the uh, the offered access communication mechanisms were uh, SMS, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. But SMS is a paid service, so not many may opt for this service. Then Bluetooth has very limited range and it cannot handle more users. And at the end the Wi-Fi 
so if you implement this remote mechanism so it will require polling so if you have a, a framework on your tablet and say you have defined policies somewhere on the server so the framework will have to poll again and again if there are any updates available so instead of that we can use google uh, google cloud messaging service so this is the free messaging service which is provided by the google and it has a client server architecture so basically a framework will implement the client part and there will be a server part uh, installed centrally in the college or uh, school so basically teachers or school admin they can log into the server and they can just update the policies and after that those updates will be sent to the gsm servers so what gsm servers will do is if the tablets are connected uh, to the wi-fi and if they are connected to the google play store then those uh, policy updates will be sent back to the device and those will be get updated and enforced eventually and if the tablets are not connected to the wi-fi then google gsm servers gsm servers they uh, stores those mes messages on the their uh, servers itself and once the the device is up then those updates are uh, sent to the device and at the end conclusion so for my uh, project thesis project i have compared many existing policy frameworks and have proposed a solution for these use cases and then this implementation hopefully will be uh, completed before end uh, may end thank you and these are the references that uh, i have given for you if you want to read those papers